All right, it is five o'clock. I will call the Transit Commission to order. Um, so we have some new members here, so we're gonna be doing uh, a quick roll call. Um, Chad Palachek. Here. Heather Cleveland. Here. Derek Knaub. Here. Uh, Alder Barb Feldy. Here. Alder Trey Mitchell. Here. Um, is the chief online? Do we have anyone else online? Mayor Sorensen is present. All right, Alder Decker is excused and Roy Kluss is excused. For those in attendance, would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Chief is here now. All right, um, so we do have some new faces here. Um, so if you both would like to, we'll just kind of go down the table and we'll introduce ourselves. And we'll kind of go around the room too because we've got some staff um, and some, some new faces as well. So uh, my name's Ryan Sorensen, I'm the mayor. Um, yeah. My name is Heather Cleveland. I recently started a, a business here in Sheboygan called Green Bicycle Company, and the focus of the company will be uh, commuter bicycles and commuter bicycle gear, so I'm really happy to be part of the Transit Commission. Um, I also was a small part of the non-motorized transportation grant at the engineering consulting firm that I was working at. My background is in civil engineering and urban planning, and I also have um, six years of nonprofit experience, and I'm happy to be here. My name is Sarah Canal. I Moved back to Sheboygan after living in Chicago. About I moved back about five years ago after living in Chicago my entire life. I have never owned a car my entire life. I've used mass transportation always, and I'm very excited to see what I can do to um, change the mass transit system here. I absolutely adore the transportation drivers that I've dealt with, with because I take the buses constantly. Um, the system is, is great. That's in place now. The buses are spotless. Um, my background is marketing, communications, and fundraising. I've had some great jobs in Chicago, and I hope to use some of that background to uh, use to further the um, mass transportation system here. I'm Alder Person Barb Feldy. Um, District 1 and Council President. Uh, I was on the Transit Committee many years ago and asked um, how long, and I said, well, pre-Perez. So it's quite a ways back. <laughs> I'm sure things have changed a little since then. That's it. I'm Chad Pelishek, I'm the City Development Director, and I've been with the City now since 2007 and served on the uh, Transit Commission since 2010 when I became the Director. Derek, do you want to introduce yourself? Do you want to do the, do you want to oh, sure. Uh, Chief, you want to introduce yourself to the new folks? I'm Chris Domogowski, I'm the Police Chief, and I've been on the Transit Commission since 2010 also. Trey? Uh, I'm Trey Mitchell, Alderman District 9, and representative from the Finance and Personnel Committee on the Transit Commission. I have been on the commission for about a year now. Derek? And uh, I'm Derek Mink. I'm uh, the Transit and Parking Director for the City of Sheboygan. Um, I am a transplant uh, to Sheboygan from neighboring Manitowoc. I've been here now just over nine years. Um, and serving as director for the last uh, seven plus years. So uh, I'd like to welcome uh, all the new members to the Transit Commission. I look forward to working with you uh, over the next uh, several years. I am thoroughly excited to have uh, a nice diverse group of individuals on the commission, um, users, uh, individuals that are familiar with it, non-motorized, which uh, Mass Transit likes to pair with very well. Um, so I'm excited to have you guys on commission. Um, and also Ryan, uh, Mayor Sorensen in his new role uh, 
on the commission as well. So um, I welcome you guys. If there's anything that I can ever do or be of service to you um, now and in the future, don't hesitate to uh, ever contact me. And I look forward to, again, working with you guys. Thank you. Ann, do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Ann Keller. I'm the Administrative Coordinator for Shoreline Metro and I've been with Shoreline Metro, it'll be 21 years in June. So I do have a lot of uh, background. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Ann. All right, so since this is a new, uh, new term of the, of the Transit Commission, we have to elect um, new officers. So I'll, I'll open up the floor to nominations. Are there any nominations? Mr. Chair, I'll nominate the mayor. Um, I'm gonna respectfully decline. Um, just don't wanna put too much on my plate right now. Um, I, I would actually like to nominate Heather Cleveland. Um, if, if she would accept. <laughs> yes, I accept, I think. Okay. <laughs> the answer is yes, but I'll need to know more about the position and order. Yeah, and, and Derek, Derek will, will connect you and, and they'll talk more too. We'll, we'll talk more. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> any, any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Seeing none, all those in favor of casting a unanimous ballot for Heather Cleveland as chair of the Transit Commission, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Congratulations, Heather. Thank you. Do you want me to run the just the rest of the meeting or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll do election of uh, vice chair for the election commission. Any any nominations for vice chair of, of the committee? I'd like to nominate Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, do you accept Hello. the nomination? We can do it together. I'll help you. You can do it. Okay. Uh, I. You only have to fill in when the chair stands. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I accept. All right. Is there a second? <laughs> by Chad. <laughs> Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Seeing none. All those in favor of casting a unanimous ballot for Sarah Canal as the vice chair of the Transit Commission, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. Congratulations, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any public input? All right. Move it along. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from our February 16th meeting? I move. Is there a second? Second. It's been a motion by Chad, second by Barb. Discussion on the minutes from our previous meeting? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. The minutes are approved. Okay, 3.1, 20. 22, 2026 capital improvement program CPI for Shoreline Metro for the and the parking utility. Derek. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just for your information, Heather and Sarah, I, I do most of the heavy lifting. So if you you want to you want a chair, or vice chair, or you want to switch sometime, I'll 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 be honored to uh, switch with you. Um, so for your uh, for your consideration tonight is the revised 2022 through 2026 capital improvement program for Shoreline Metro and the parking utility. Um, just a little bit of a backstory for uh, perhaps the, the new members. Uh, annually, uh, as part of the uh, city's capital improvement program, uh, each of our departments uh, are uh, charged with the task of presenting uh, capital needs and requests uh, as part of our uh, ongoing I guess, replacement of our assets and, and, and general uh, maintenance of our assets. Um, so for consideration, I'm presenting a revised and updated list for calendar years 2022 through 2026, uh, of which I believe 2022 is, is really the only one that is uh, being taken action on at this point. The other four years are just for preliminary and planning purposes. Um, so if you open your packet up, you're gonna see, uh, I, I don't have much to present, especially in parking. Um, we have no project scheduled for 2022, and the project that is actually scheduled for 2023 is likely gonna fall off the, uh, the schedule uh, here uh, probably for next year. So um, 
And then there's only one other project and that's a major uh, redevelopment of a parking lot in the riverfront area. Um, I know that probably doesn't mean much now, but we'll get into a little bit more of what parking uh, does, uh, maybe on a side uh, meeting with you guys. But um, that's really the only project that's gonna be in the five-year capital plan uh, for the parking utility at this point. Switching over to transit, um, this has kind of been a, a three-year progression here to get where we are with our capital needs. Um, but obviously one of the uh, critical elements to providing mass transit other than the uh, human uh, capital is the physical capital and that is buses. Um, so going back a little bit, uh, we received our first uh, brand new fixed rail buses uh, in 2019 and those are the first buses we had received in, in nine years, uh, which is, uh, wasn't a very healthy replacement schedule, um, but nevertheless we worked through the challenges and. Uh, were awarded some grants to do that. Uh, we took receipt of one bus last year through a state program, uh, the VW mitigation program, if you've heard of it before. Um, and then uh, we were in the works of applying again for a second round of the VW mitigation funding. Uh, and then along with being a non-attainment area, uh, we are eligible for what's called uh, congestion mitigation and air quality control grants, uh, CMAC for short. Um, and we were also awarded buses uh, through that grant. So all in all, uh, we were awarded uh, 12 buses to be funded um, over the next uh, couple of years. We did a little bit of work uh, through a couple of those programs and then working with City Administrator Wolf and his staff uh, to rearrange uh, all those uh, buses into 2022. Uh, so in your, capital, uh, in your package, you're gonna see the five-year capital needs plan for Shoreline Metro and you're gonna see um, there's a whole lot going on in 2022, and then after that, um, it looks pretty clean, um, and that's because we moved a little, we moved some projects around. Um, I'm happy to report that out of the 12 buses we were granted, we're funding uh, 10 of those vehicles, and purchase orders have been issued uh, for those 10 vehicles uh, within the last couple of weeks, and now uh, we are anticipating a delivery schedule of late summer, early fall of 2022 for those vehicles. Um, so your approval on these items is, uh, is a matter of formality. Um, I'm, I'm getting this to you kind of late. Uh, actually, the ball's already been rolling in the Capital Improvement Committee, um, but I did wanna review this with you as these projects have been technically approved in uh, previous years and previous Capital Improvement Programs. Um, <clears throat> so uh, just for your review in future years, there's a couple paratransit vehicles that are scheduled. Uh, we have a partnership with Sheboygan County uh, who also purchases vehicles for us on the uh, demand response paratransit side of things. You'll see they're, uh, they're italicized, which means that's their responsibility or their, um, their program year to purchase those vehicles. So aside from 2022's major purchase of around $4.6 million, you aren't gonna see um, many capital projects for transit uh, in the next five years. So. Um, Yeah, good question. Uh, Chad asked, what does the 12 buses do to the total fleet? Um, I, I would imagine in, uh, in terms of useful life and, and condition and stuff. Um, so back, uh, back prior to 2019, um, we were driving uh, buses that uh, were beyond useful life as considered uh, by FTA, which is usually 12, uh, 12 years or 500,000 miles. Um, we don't think of our cars driving 500,000 miles. Um, but buses, they're workhorses. They, <clears throat> 500 is, I kind of say it's just usually breaking them in because they can go much longer than that if you keep up on maintenance. Um, but in 2019, prior to receiving new vehicles, our fleet was 75% past useful life. That basically means two things. Um, we're, we're driving around high maintenance vehicles, um, meaning that they're very, very costly um, and very inefficient to operate. Um, and then also uh, low, low reliability. So when you have that high of a number, uh, past useful life, you start to see both of those things um, happen, which is really what we were seeing happen. Um, to put in perspective here, over the last uh, couple of years with receiving the five buses in 19, the one bus in 2020 um, that we got through Volkswagen mitigation, and then the 10 that are gonna be coming in 2022, uh, that coupled with the five buses that we have from 2010 will mean that 100% of our fleet is under useful life. Um, so we, in a matter of uh, three years, will have gone from 75% past useful life to 100% uh, 
uh, within useful life. So that's a, that's a tremendous stat, um, and that's a credit to um, not only my team, but um, Transit Commission, City of Sheboygan, and the Capital Improvements Program for making uh, that happen in such a short period of time. Did that answer your question, Chad? Okay. Question, questions for Derek or getting the Capital Improvements proposals? Uh, Mr. Feldy? Um, Derek, you have on there that um, there are 35 foot buses. Um, is are those the larger buses and are they as fuel economic as the shorter ones um really when you come to fuel efficiency there's there's really no such thing in mass transit buses All right, um right. whether you're referring to the the smaller vehicles yes you're going to get better gas mileage on a on a smaller paratransit type bus um, they're lighter, they're cut away, there's a lot of fiberglass and, and, uh, and frame, um, but you don't get the useful life on them. Those typically run about five years, 100,000 miles, or seven years, 150,000, just depending upon where you're at. So you don't get, you don't get the capacity, you don't get the, um, you don't get the longevity and the robustness of a fixed rail bus. Um, so you have to eventually uh, purchase more or spend more on those buses long haul. Um, the reason why we do uh, stick with the, or I should clarify, maybe a 35-foot bus as opposed to uh, mass transit or fixed rail buses that are 30 feet uh, in length. Um, we used to have a, a, a set of about five buses, yeah, five 30-foot uh, buses, which uh, are 24 passenger buses. That's the lowest uh, size bus that you'll see in a mass transit system, in a fixed rail system. Um, when you look at those vehicles as far as gas mileage, there's no difference between those and a 35 footer. Um, you can get you can get buses about 40 feet plus. Then you can get the um, uh, the one that looks like the accordion. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. You you know you probably know when you're in Chicago the articulated articulated buses. That's it. Um, <clears throat> so when it comes to fuel economy, um, you're going to get a little better on the paratransit buses than you are on the fixed route but the fixed rail buses are gonna be a lot more robust. They're gonna last a lot longer. Um, we switched over to all 35 footers a couple of years ago because of the fact that we had ridership growth. Um, over the last, is it nine years since I've been here? Um, we've increased ridership by 54% and part of that was uh, the development of our SASD mm -hmm. school agreement. Um, th we could not put 30, 30 foot buses in service because the capacity was just too great. Um, we actually found it much more cumbersome because we had to take these out of the, we had to take these out of service mid morning and mid afternoon because we couldn't put enough kids on board. Um, that or we needed to put more drivers out there, which is, is a very costly venture to add buses out into revenue service. Um, so we bailed on the 30 footers and we got all 35 footers, which allows us to essentially put between 50 and 60 students on a bus comfortably. And yes, under normal circumstances, five, six of our uh, nine buses in the afternoon will hit that capacity. So um, that kind of gives you a little bit more uh, update on it, but the fuel economy has a long ways to go in general on buses. It's just not something you typically look at. But all of our newer buses, um, all of our buses next year will essentially be clean diesel buses um, after we get this next replacement. So emissions are gonna be very low. Um, fuel economy is gonna be still you know, iffy, but they are newer buses, so that should improve as well over the uh, buses that we have. And just to give you a comparison, we are running 19, 18 and 19 year old buses right now. Uh, we actually have eight of those in fleet um, and they're pushing 700,000 miles. So that's what we're gonna be replacing next year. Thank you. Okay, additional questions? Is there a motion to accept? I'll make a motion to accept. Motion by Barb, second by Chad. Further discussion? Mayor, I'd just like to add that um, with the approval of the, uh, the capital improvement request, uh, they then um, are included in the city's uh, general uh, capital improvements program uh, that does ultimately get approved by uh, Common Council. And it's our, these items are already uh, included into that uh, program. Thanks, Derek. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. 3.2, first quarter 2021 reports for Shoreline Metro and the parking utilities. 
All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, just to uh, kind of maybe give a little bit of an overview here, yes, uh, COVID-19 uh, and the coronavirus pandemic has significantly impacted uh, ridership on Shoreline Metro um, for uh, Sarah and Heather and, and maybe uh, Barb. Uh, 2019 uh, was our highest uh, annual ridership total in close to 20 years. Uh, we approached almost 700,000 trips. Um, when I started here, our first year of ridership was 470,000. Um, so that's where the 54% increase comes in. Um, and so uh, when the pandemic hit, unfortunately, we weren't, we weren't gonna get to that 700,000 mark as much as we wanted to. Um, so the pandemic has, uh, has impacted us. Our ridership was down uh, 45% in 2020 compared to uh, 2019. Um, and now in 2021, we're in that rebound phase. Uh, where um, more and more people are starting to use transit for a uh, number of reasons. Uh, granted, schools back in session, jobs, you name it. People just feeling more comfortable and safe uh, to take mass transit. Um, in your packet, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna uh, divert too much away from the report, but in your packet, I did include, and I'll come back in the director's report, uh, but I did include a summary on COVID-19 for you guys. Um, that you can read as to how we battled uh, the pandemic. Uh, two very important things that we were very proud of was that we were not linked to an outbreak um, in our organization, both for our employees and for our customers. Um, and we didn't have to uh, cancel any uh, service due to a lack of uh, drivers and staff. So two things we were very, very uh, proud of. Um, but for the first quarter, uh, compared to the first quarter of last year, uh, ridership is down uh, 51%. Um, it's gonna be a little bit higher right now because of the fact that um, we're, we had all three months uh, this year, we're all in the pandemic, whereas all three months in the first quarter of last year, or the first two months were in the pandemic and half of the uh, third month was in the pandemic. Um, and revenue is down 28% um, at this point as well. Um, let me see here. COVID, uh, like I said, continues to impact uh, ridership and revenue. Uh, March revenue is uh, up 27% over last March. So we're hoping that's a positive indicator of recovery and returning to normal. Um, the pandemic has reached the 12 months and so future reports now are gonna be uh, comparing pandemic numbers uh, with pandemic numbers. <clears throat> uh, revenue trips uh, for the quarter were 9.38 trips per hour. Um, again, I apologize, I'm, I'm rambling numbers off that probably mean uh, very little at this point, but again, I hope to uh, educate and work with you guys in the future to help understand some of our performance indicators. Um, and so the, the, that was the fixed route, 51% uh, down ridership, but up, and, or sorry, revenue down 28%. Metro connection was very similar. Uh, ridership was down for the quarter by 38% with revenue down 35%. Um, for most of the quarter, uh, actually all of the quarter, uh, we shifted all of our fixed route Saturday service over to demand response uh, that was provided by Metro Connection. Um, so that contributes to the ridership down on the fixed route side, but does help with the ridership uh, up on the Metro Connection side and hence why there's not as big of a decline in ridership in the first quarter on, on pair transit. And then uh, I have some, same, uh, some similar stats here for Metro Connection. The, the trips, trips per hour are significantly down again. Um, and then parking utility revenue uh, was down for the quarter by 30%. Um, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that uh, we're, we, we're not really sure what that's gonna track and how that's gonna track. Um, it's always positive when we see more and more people downtown. Obviously businesses are back opening. Uh, restaurants are getting busy. Um, so I think naturally that, re, uh, that rebound's gonna happen. Um, but I think most of our revenue is probably down in parking permits right now. And, and that is, uh, I think, related to people working from home yet and not being back in the office and some of our uh, major uh, employers downtown. So um, in your packet, you do have the report for transit and the report for parking utility. You'll see this report each quarter um, and the numbers will fill in as we go along. So. Um, with that, I ask if you have any questions on the uh, quarter reports. Any questions for, for Derek? Not yet, but I will later. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> right, is there a motion to accept the report? Motion to accept. Any 
motion second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair both sides. Thanks, Eric. Director's report then, 3.3. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first thing on my on my report, um, I did want to spend just maybe a little bit of time on this, um, just uh, to update you on some things that are going on. Um, I don't want to spend again too much time on the COVID-19 stuff. I did uh, provide you with the white paper that was put together, um, serving customers during a pandemic. I actually spoke at a Chamber First Friday forum, uh, weathering the storm, and I put this one pager together for that. Um, as to how we combated uh, the, the coronavirus pandemic and we're able to continue providing service uh, throughout the entire uh, time uh, to those that needed essential services, uh, including transit. Um, so if you have questions on that, I'd be happy to take it um, at the end. Um, but I do want to go into a couple of the other items. Uh, we, uh, every three years, we're required to go through what is called a federal triennial review um, and that's put on by the, by the uh, Federal uh, Transit Administration. Uh, region 5 out of Chicago um, is our uh, oversight uh, region. And uh, I was happy to say that we were able to meet with them yesterday uh, virtually. It was a, a little over a five-hour session on Zoom. So if you've ever done a Zoom call before, that was officially my longest. Um, <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, it was a very successful day. Uh, going back, uh, we originally supposed to have this review in August of 2020, but due to the pandemic, it was pushed out um, and we were able to complete it yesterday. Uh, we will have our final wrap-up session two weeks from this Thursday. I think that's the third, if I'm not mistaken, um, and that at, at which time we will find out if we have any deficiencies um, or any uh, findings, as they call it. Uh, back in 2017, which was our last triennial review, uh, we had a perfect training review with zero findings. Um, I'm not going to get too optimistic, but I'm pretty certain we probably are going to get a zero finding training review this time again. Um, uh, very successful. Uh, a lot of a lot of work went into it um, over the years between my staff and and uh, many city departments. So again, thank you for that, um, and I will be sharing that results uh, with you guys as soon as I receive that. Item number three, I've already talked about bus purchases with you, gives you a little bit more details uh, as to those purchases. Um, for those that were on the commission prior, I've, I've updated on a possibility of the town of Sheboygan uh, opting in for transit services. That has uh, since been halted um, and they have put that on the back burner again, so we will not be pursuing uh, any uh, transit relationship with the town at this time, hmm. but we remain open uh, should they uh, change their mind and, and want to uh, start that dialogue again. Um, <clears throat> we recently uh, worked with our uh, union, uh, the union that represents the drivers and the maintenance staff at Shoreline Metro. It's the Amalgamated Transit Union, Local 998, uh, to revise the current wage scale for our paratransit operators and the creation of a utility worker position. Um, I put some uh, minor details in here, um, but due to the fact that the Agreement hasn't been officially signed yet. Um, I'm not releasing the, the full details of it, but I will say our paratransit drivers were making under uh, market value uh, for their services in comparison to other transit systems and uh, forecasting hiring needs in the next um, year or so and knowing where the current conditions are, what other relative uh, like retail manufacturing are hiring uh, at, we needed to bump up our wage to stay competitive uh, and still be able to hire excellent and qualified individuals. So we adjusted our wage scale uh, up slightly for our drivers, both current and new hires. Um, and so that we can, again, continue the success of hiring uh, well-qualified, safe, and, and awesome team members for our team. And then we also create a new position. Uh, it's a utility worker position um, that allows uh, individuals to uh, perform maintenance duties as well as drive uh, buses both on our fixed road and our paratransit. Um, over the years, we've been trying to uh, take down the silos, uh, meaning that employees were assigned to either driving fixed route or paratransit or uh, performing light maintenance duties. Um, we've, we've gotten rid of two of the silos, and that was that we were able to have drivers do both paratransit and fixed route. The last maneuver here is to kind of tie in those light maintenance duties and offer the opportunity for drivers to fill in 
uh, doing some bus cleaning, uh, fueling of buses, things like that. So uh, we've entered into an agreement to make that uh, position possible, which will add a lot more flexibility to our part-time staff. Um, so those items uh, will be signed off and incorporated into the current labor agreement, um, hopefully making us a, a much more attractive option, uh, especially for those entry-level uh, driver positions. So. Uh, number six, our Harbor Center Express, which is a trolley route, um, will commence on June 14th and run through September 4th. Um, our tr trolleys that we currently have um, were retired, uh, uh, retired because they are tired. Um, <laughs> we are trying to get one back up and running just to get us through, um, but uh, I'm working with Chad and uh, City Administrator Wolf on hopefully procuring a, a new trolley, uh, used probably trolley, uh, to be used in our service. But we do, uh, for, for you guys that, that don't know, we do offer a trolley route throughout the uh, South Pier Riverfront and downtown areas throughout the summer. Uh, it's been a very successful venture for us over the last couple of years. Um, so we want to keep that tradition going, especially after last year when we didn't offer the service. So hopefully we can rebound that service this summer by um, opening it up again and, and making it better than ever. Um, and you'll see in your packet, I think there was a route guide for the Harbor Center Express. Is that true? Yep. Yes, okay. Good, thank you. Uh, a couple more items. Uh, Hotspot is my next item here. Um, I'm currently in discussions with a mobile payment company called Hotspot. Um, they offer mobile payment solutions for both uh, transit and for parking. Uh, many, in, uh, many individuals or many companies like this in the industry have uh, primarily focus on one or the other, um, but Hotspot um, has uh, has elected to go and incorporate both, uh, which is very attractive for us. Um, so I've started uh, some discussions. We are going to have a uh, presentation later this month that brings in uh, additional city officials. Uh, the the police chief uh, Chris Domagowski and uh, city administrator Todd Wolf will be uh, able to attend that as well. Um, because obviously there's the uh, enforcement side of it. Um, so it's not just parking utility uh, doing the operations, it's um, uh, also our police department who does the enforcing um, and their CSOs that do a lot of the customer service downtown. So it's, it's really a, a triangle um, that makes up our parking utility. So um, we really need everybody on board, finance, operations, and, and uh, police uh, to make uh, mobile payments happen. So hopefully we'll be moving ahead on that. Um, and getting away from the uh, solely just coin collecting and the meters. I know everybody that parks downtown would like a mobile uh, payment option, so we're excited to hopefully work through this and, uh, and put a solution together that makes sense for, this, for the city. Um, last item that I really have for you guys, on-demand service. Um, so during the pan pandemic, we experimented with using on-demand service instead of fixed route service. Um, that was kind of alluding to maybe Barb's question about using smaller buses instead of bigger buses. Um, it's called right sizing public transit. So we we started looking at areas where we can right size and perhaps uh, provide on-demand uh, services, very similar. I don't like to use the word Uber or uh, taxis because I like to think we'll do it better, but um, it is a cost sharing, ride sharing program um, that we would like to try to develop and that would uh, better service uh, perhaps areas of Sheboygan, um, our growing industrial park on the south side, and then also our partner uh, municipalities with the village of Kohler uh, increasing their needs in different areas for public transit services in the uh, city of Falls as well that shares in those things. So we're looking at developing a third uh, transit option uh, at this point that um, most, I wouldn't say most in Wisconsin, but probably most systems across the United States are, are starting to look at it. Also known as micro transit, um, if, if you've heard that term before too. So um, very exciting project that my staff and I have uh, been tinkering with over the last year during the pandemic and we hope to uh, bring that out and make that a reality here either later this year or early next year. Um, and then lastly, I just wanna say thank you to everybody. Um, I know you guys are new and maybe didn't feel like you had a hand in everything, but um, know going forward that you're gonna have a significant hand in uh, assisting uh, myself and my staff with um, Shoreline Metro and the parking utility. Um, and again, I'm, I'm excited to work with you guys. So thank you for being a part of the Transit Commission and don't uh, hesitate to contact me if I can ever be of service to you guys. So with that, Mr. Mayor, I am done with the director's report. Awesome, thanks Derek, appreciate it. Questions for Derek? All right. 
Is there a motion to accept the director's report? Second. Motion by Chad, second by Barb. Additional comments? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the report, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. That's approved. Thank you, Derek. We've exhausted the agenda. Next meeting will be determined. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. second. Motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor of adjourning, please state aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Chair votes aye. We're adjourned at 535. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.